We're not politically correct, we just have common sense. Unscripted, unfiltered, unfaltering. Show of Support's Hunt for Heroes offers tributes and true stories of remarkable courage. If these terrorists could come in your bedroom, they'd kill you, your wife, and your kids. And that's what these men are fighting to protect us from, these, these murdering idiots. And uh, they're taking them out so that we don't have to deal with them over here. Show of Support started it all, just after the shock and awe bound the nation together. Now, years of footage portraying wounded veterans, deer stands, and standing ovations. Hunt for heroes that started as one man's way to say thanks is now a series that many say is way overdue. This is something I'll never forget for the rest of my life. It's just a raw emotion. It's been like a dream. It really has. We still have 40,000 injured troops. It's going to take a while to get around to all of them, but there's no quitting. It'll never stop as long as I'm breathing. The brush country of South Texas. It's a landscape that's harsh, unforgiving, and yet it provides so much for so many. It's the birthplace of memories that span several lifetimes. And for others, it can be the best therapy in the world, right here on the Shiner Ranch. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that perfect one. You waiting for it. What are you waiting for? I was actually, we heard a pack of them. My favorite yeah. part of the hunt was probably just hanging out with everybody afterwards. Uh, every night we came back to the camp house and sat around, told stories, and hung out, you know, over a giant feast. And that's probably what I enjoyed the most. Took shrapnel to the back and a piece to the back of the head. Chris Capasso from New Hampshire is on his first hunting trip ever. His injuries from an enemy grenade will affect him forever. But this deer hunt will hopefully balance out a lot of bad memories. I was in the Boy Scouts for a couple years and uh, lost my arm to a scrapbooking accident. <laughs> I'm fully recovered and uh, thanks for letting me come. I live in a little town called Cresswell, about eight miles south of Eugene, Oregon. I actually have more anxiety now speaking to all you guys than I have looking deer through a scope rifle. Joining Chris is Michael Ariskovic. He's hunted his whole life enough to know the universal fascination of South Texas whitetails. Not a lot of people have the opportunity to hunt the famous Texas whitetail, and uh, I knew this would be a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I was very excited to come down here and try and do it. Even though deer hunting is no surprise to Michael, a new rifle is. We'll let, like I say, let you get, get familiar with it. You familiar with Ruger? While Chris Capasso and the other guys have already been surprised with new rifles, Michael's flight delay prevented him from the simple ceremony at the range. This platoon leader can't wait to feel the first kick of his brand new Ruger. When I found out that I was coming down here to Texas to hunt whitetail, I was really excited. We don't really have the opportunity to do it in Oregon, and I knew this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Chris Capasso finds his rifle is right where he wants it at 100 yards. It's hard for him to concentrate on a target when he knows daylight is burning. Exactly where it's supposed to be, it's uh, an inch to the right. Everybody is shooting straight, and the crowd scatters in different directions. <laughs> Mike Ariskovic and his hunting guide, Jason Sakula, settled in at a ground blind miles from the lodge. It's a very relaxing thing for me. I love being outside and outdoors. Hunting and fishing is just something I kind of grew up with doing, and it's helped me out a lot since I got back. 
whole family's been in the, the military, primarily in the Navy and the Marine Corps, throughout World War II and Korea and Vietnam. And I was just something I've always wanted to do. Uh, I was the black sheep of the family, wanted to join the Army, uh, didn't want to be on a boat, don't really like the ocean too much. And uh, from about seven years old, that's all I ever really wanted to do is be in the infantry and jump out of airplanes. Well, the day that I lost my arm uh, was on October 11th of 2004. A week prior, I'd been in a similar incident where uh, we were ambushed by a car bomb and I sustained shrapnel. Um, I figured, what are the odds that it could happen again? And it was my platoon's last actual patrol that we were going to go on. We were heading home about a week later. And after conducting a 12-hour mission, we were told to go through the middle of town where we were ambushed. My vehicle and another vehicle in front of me was struck with a car bomb, drove in between the two and detonated, uh, ripping my arm off. And I sustained shrapnel and uh, some head injuries. I was able to return fire and we all made it back to base for the most part. But I don't have any regrets. I don't regret going to Iraq at all, even though I've lost my arm. I served with a lot of great men uh, that I would do anything for. I still try to stay in contact with as much of them as we can. As for what we did over there, it was a war. Uh, we helped build a lot of schools, um, bring water to a lot of villages, bring stability to the region. A lot of people were grateful for that. I got to see little girls go to school for the first time and people vote that have never voted. Um, I have no regrets for anything that we did over there and I think it was a better place when I left. The memories of those moments that changed Michael's life forever are interrupted by a buff that deserves everybody's attention. I was getting really excited. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, nice deer that came into the area, uh, but a lot of them were too young. And when he came in, you, you kind of knew right away that he was, he was going to be the one. Uh, there were a lot of other deer in the area, so it was a patience game that we had to play. I was excited until I picked up my rifle, and then I, I was able to start uh, settling down. A little bit of buck fever to begin with, but uh, it, it was good. I, I, was, I was worked up a lot. I didn't want to mess up the opportunity, so I was trying to focus real hard on my breathing and controlling myself. And like I said, there were a lot of uh, other deer in the air that were in front of it and behind it. And it took a while for him to present a very clear and ethical shot, which I wasn't going to do unless that opportunity arose. And every time he'd have it for a split second, the safety would go off and I'd get ready. Waiting for a shot seems to take forever. Then, the chance Michael's been waiting for. What do you think, Derek? Try one more time. If not, just go for it. Back. Back. Hang on just a second. He's going to look here. Wait. No clear. Just quartering away. Back. They're looking right in front of him. There we go, right there. Good shot. Good shot. That's a nice one. <laughs> good job. It's a good one. Looks like a good deer. deer. He's really wide. Yeah, he is. Shot look clean? Yeah. yeah I, I was so. very happy that uh, I made a clean shot. So regardless not if I got a deer or not, I was happy. I, I, I could have gone home happy. When we walked up to the spot where that deer went in the brush, we were kind of looking down, looking for some sign, and there were some heavy tracks going in. There wasn't any blood right there, but there were some heavy tracks going in that trail. Kind of gave us an idea where to look in, and through that little window right there in the brush, you could see that buck laying just in there. And those antlers sticking up out of the grass really looked good, and he was very happy and, and very excited, and I was as well. Um, excited to see that deer, and he looked really nice laying there, and, and really wanted to get in there and get our hands on him, see what he looked like. Wow, look at that. Oh, man. Good deer. Yeah, it's all 
scarred up from fighting. Really wide. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Thank you very much, man. This is great. This is amazing. Good shot. He was a heavy deer. <laughs> that rack is big. He, he was a big 10 point. I was so happy and relieved. I don't like seeing things suffer and knowing that he didn't made me happy. I had confidence in my abilities Thank you again. and my shooting abilities and um, I was just happy that the whole thing culminated with a very nice deer. Mike Oreskovic is still coping with the loss of his left arm. It seems he's found one more thing he can still do and still do well here in South Texas. Down on the longest, widest Sendero on the Shiner, a great buck sends another American hero into an adrenaline overload. When show of support hunt for heroes continues. Stay with us. This is actually my first hunting trip. Didn't really have anything built up in my mind about what it would be or what it wouldn't be. I just was here for the experience and to try and learn a uh, new craft. South Texas hunting guide Joseph Burleson loves nothing more than to accompany a first-time hunter to a blind. He knows this is a moment no one ever forgets. This is where memories are forged forever, where something happens to a person that will affect him forever. His hunter is Chris Capasso. As they settle into the tower blind on the Shiny Ranch, it's hard for either of them to believe this is January. Show of support I heard about through, actually a fellow soldier had gone through the hunt uh, a couple months prior and he told me about it and how awesome it was and you know the great experience that he had and the guys that he met. And so he said it was something I should look into. All right, come on up. I started thinking about the military when I was in high school. I applied for an ROTC scholarship to college, and that's kind of how it got started. Went to school on an ROTC scholarship, got commissioned in 2007, and that's really how the military started for me. I was deployed from June of 2009 to June of 2010 to Kunar Province, Afghanistan. While well, I was there, I was injured twice, once on December. In December, I was uh, standing next to the front gate of 107 rocket came in. Took a piece of shrapnel to the back and a piece to the back of the head. The piece of my back is still there. And then again on May 25th, 2010, walking again, AGS-17, a Russian version of a grenade launcher, hit our fob and I was hit again with a piece in the back, which is still there, and a piece of shrapnel went through my right arm. The stories that the show of support heroes have to share are sometimes hard to process. Some veterans find it easy. Others would just as soon let it go. Either way, let it be known that war may be a hell, but retaliation is triumph. The idiots responsible for Chris Capasso's permanent injury were lit up and sent skyward in pieces. Like we say, the trash has been taken out by the greatest military force the world has ever known. And Chris is one of those who carry the distinction of serving the greatest nation in the world. And here on the Shiner Ranch in South Texas, the warm January afternoon and several deer out feeding help soothe certain memories. But something else that takes the mind off of war is the first buck of the hunt. When I saw my first deer, uh, it was pretty exciting. The young buck is showing wear and tear left over from the rut. Coming from the shadows of a long sendero, a nice buck makes his way to the field. Joseph knows this is a great buck, but youth will save this deer for a later year. I was a little bit in awe, almost. Jumping the fence, the buck is going to make it hard on Chris, who by now, is ready to find the crosshairs. Chris is learning an important lesson about whitetail hunting in South Texas, something called restraint. The field is filling up with deer, but the old mature bucks are somewhere else. 
Joseph gets every minute he can out of the daylight. But soon, the decision comes forth to come back in the morning. It seems the wait is well worth it as show of support hunt for heroes continues. Stay with us. Shiner Ranch has, I guess, a pretty big reputation down here. They've got a lot of friends in this area. A lot of them put together dinners for us and uh, barbecues in the afternoons, lunches, and just volunteered their time and cooking expertise to coming out and just visiting with us. At no point did I ever feel like we were outsiders here. You know, they brought us in just like we were one of the family and we got to stand around the campfire and hang out and, you know, tell our story. We heard a lot of their stories about growing up in Texas and what it's like down here. And you guys are being honored and America's finally waking up. It's the last morning of Chris Capasso's whitetail hunt down in South Texas at the Shiner Ranch. While Chris and his guide Joseph Burleson watch a group of deer, they're waiting on the mature bucks and they're watching a huge fog bank roll in. Joseph quietly tells his hunter that the fog will burn off soon. And sure enough, the sky opens up like it's a brand new day. Seems they've put in this pop-up blind in a perfect place because there's a bunch of deer feeding down on the Sendero right in front of the pop-up blind. And the buck coming in on the right immediately gets a green light from Joseph. It's going to be a long wait though, hoping the buck will clear all the others in the group. I was looking through the binos and saw him and the guide said, all right, you, you know, you can go ahead and, and take that one. And you get a little nervous at first. You start to shake and your heart picks up. It took a while for the buck that we were watching to, to clear from the rest of them and then also to come broadside to us and, and give us a good shot on him. Then there was a couple opportunities where he had stopped for a second and then he would turn around again or he'd go back into the pack or go behind a, a cactus or a bush. It's just like they thought. The wait is taking forever. As the long minutes pass and after a while the head count is lowered, but it still leaves the buck in a bad position. Finally, the buck is clear. Good job. Did I get him? Yeah. The shot's off. Congratulations. It's a pretty great feeling once, once you pull that trigger and you know that he went down. It was, uh, it was pretty incredible. I didn't want to let another chance slip away. I had waited uh, a day and a half to get him. Grass. Mm -hmm. When we first saw the blood on the road and we knew that we had him, that's great. Because when you first shoot him, you don't really know. All the rest of the deer start to scatter and he jumps off. So you're, you're kind of worried about you know, whether I hit him or not. And then when you see that, you know, your heart starts to beat a little faster and you start looking for the next blood spot to, to go find him. And uh, it's a pretty amazing feeling. Oh, it's nice. When I first walked up on the deer and saw him laying there, I mean, just pure excitement. Like I said before, I've never been a part of a hunt before. I'd, I'd never gone out and shot anything and all the work that goes into it, you know, we were out all morning and, and finally got one. It was, it, it was really exciting. Your heart's beating fast. You want to just grab the horns and start inspecting everything about them and, and check everything out. It was, it was a really neat, neat experience. Getting to put my hands on them and, and see up close what you'd seen through binos from, you know, a hundred meters away was, it was pretty incredible. You get to you get to see every little flaw, every little detail in his uh, horns, and you know everything else. It's it's just uh, it's kind of indescribable the feeling that you get when you get up to him and 
you know, you're just you're just excited. You're happy that the the hunt went well. You're happy that you know you put everything into place that the guide taught you, and and uh, you're happy that you get to walk away with with your first buck. I was kind of speechless at first. I didn't really know how to react other than just to kind of stare wide mouthed at him. Uh, yeah. uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks. Sir. I made you know three new friends this trip. Guides were excellent. And then just the, the whole experience, you know, getting to hang out with a bunch of people and do your own thing, kind of in the woods and watch how the animals interact on their own. It's the part Terry Johnson hates worst of all, saying goodbye to another group of his heroes. It comes without saying that deer hunting bonds people, but surrounded by American heroes, deer hunting is taken to a whole new level and so is gratitude. It really makes you feel good coming in, seeing all these people that are willing to uh, put aside all of their personal things and just uh, recognize soldiers for what they do overseas. I can't thank Christian Hildebrand and Shiner Ranch enough for uh, what they've done for me and for these other guys. I mean, this, this was an experience of a lifetime, especially for me being my first hunt. They took us in, treated us like family. We got to meet their entire families, their kids, their wives, everybody. And, you know, they really just made us feel welcome and, and made this probably one of the most comfortable and exciting experiences I've ever had. See you guys later. See ya. What Terry's done is he's given these guys all the tools they need to go back and continue hunting and continue going in the outdoors and to use that as a way of release and a, a way to get away from any stress or anything that may be bothering them in their lives and kind of help them on their road to recovery.